it takes a village to raise a child. A familiar African proverb which implies people in the village work together to raise a child. What happens when there isn't a village? What if we were to reconsider the child's role? Turn it around. It takes a child to raise a village. It is the child who gives meaning and purpose to the village. It is the child who unknowingly is capable of developing and giving us tangible proof of the possibility of a better humanity. The makers of a new kind of village. What would happen if we created a school based on cooperative platforms and value exchange? A prototype where local community groups are partnered and located on school grounds. Small businesses operate, sustainable food practices are used to grow food. Performing and visual artists create and facilitate. Advanced technologies enable global connections and shared knowledge is valued. A school which is a melting pot of diverse peoples coming together to enrich and share learning. At the centre of this work, it takes a child to raise a village. The current platform for most schools still largely adhere to the industrial age factory model of education. These organisations know that current ways of working continue to shape job ready young adults. But these jobs are from a far gone era. Here are some of the challenges that inhibit the shift to a new and a different education paradigm. Schools just cannot continue to do the wrong thing more right and hope to make this shift. Tweaking past practices to meet the needs of the future is reckless. School leaders and their school communities are caught in a kind of arrested development. All they need is the courage and wisdom to abandon the outdated model and begin creating a new one. This is not a new message. Many have heralded this message before me. The persistence and dominance of the old education paradigm is staggering. In many ways, it's easier for our school. We are often more easily able to experiment, to innovate, to improvise. We are flexible and can act as laboratories, pioneering new ideas. These are our guiding questions as we anticipate the future. Independent, non-systemic schools such as ours have challenges not often understood by the wider population. We lack the support of a solid institution like a government or church. If and when we go through a bad patch, we are possibly more vulnerable than others. And these are also the same questions that on those nights you want to sleep and your brain says, lol, no. We're not going to sleep tonight. We're going to think about this. And you say, OK. Here are some of the ways that this emerging model add value at a local level. The Value Exchange Program is a prototype which we have begun this year. In essence, the program sees local tutors sharing knowledge and skills with the children in exchange for use of the facilities to run workshops outside of school hours and on holidays. Here is how the model might work on a global platform. Potentially, this is a transferable model and the needs of any local community will be met. This model provides the space for knowledge creation, continuous knowledge transfer, while the users practice, interact and learn. Imagine this, an Indigenous artist with little children huddled around her watching with fascination as she paints and shares stories. Young adolescents walk by with baskets of farm produce. A small eclectic group of people sharing ideas about their recent failed rocket launch. A group of children figuring out how many droplets of water it takes to fill their bucket and how long before the bucket is full. If we adapt these new ways of working, self-organisation, interdependence, deep collaboration, and continuous transformation will be evident in our daily practice, never again stuck in an old paradigm. We know that we have to develop a self-funded financial model. A self-funded financial model? I'll tell you in our break. <laughs> we know that government funding is not absolute. 
and so we need to be shovel ready. So if it's not a school, what is it? If it doesn't look like a school, walk like a school, talk like a school, what do we call this new entity, this uh, new learning place, this knowledge creation place? Here is some that we thought of earlier, but we have about 15 seconds for you to kind of share your ideas. If you have any, shout them out. Um, don't be shy. What? Learning? The Learning Village. OK. Oh, OK. You're voting on it. OK. <laughs> Working in partnerships with local agencies enables access to a broad range of individuals and an individual skill set not often available in traditional schools. Developing these relationships opens a space for co-creation and a sustainable learning community, a learning community grounded in humanness, rich in learning, and alive with human endeavor. These are the two areas in blue that we've set aside that have potential to be developed as community hubs, community learning hubs. We're on a 54-acre property, and this is just the front part of the property. It is quite a special place. The makers of a new kind of village. It takes a child to help us reconnect, unlearn, relearn, and once again be filled with wonder and purpose. It takes a child to raise a village. <laughs> <laughs>